Good morning, everyone. My name is Vitor Silva, and I'm the Seismic Risk Coordinator at the Global Earthquake Model Foundation. I would like to share with you the work my colleague Anirudh Rao and I have been developing regarding rapid earthquake damage assessment using remote sensing and machine learning, which can be useful to support field missions and reconnaissance teams shortly after the occurrence of destructive events. So the justification for the development of this work was supported by the outcomes of a previous project where more than 30 risk managers responsible for field damage data collection were interviewed, and these interviews allow us to highlight the following issues. The collection of damage data from destructive events can take several months, if not more. So it is fundamental to first have some rapid estimates of damage, usually within the first 24 hours of the event. Second, to ensure that the field teams are strategically distributed uh, in the affected area to maximize the resources that are available to collect uh, data. Another issue that was highlighted was related to the financial support, which is often only triggered um, when field visits take place. But that might take several months, as I previously mentioned it, and this is going to delay the release of financial support, which is um, required to start the recovery process. Finally, some communities are often isolated, preventing the organization of field missions to collect loss and damage data. So it is important to understand the extent of the damage, the spatial distribution of the damage, and for communities that might be isolated, alternative means uh, might be arranged for the um, reconnaissance teams. So these were the challenges that were defined for the development of this numerical framework that we're presenting here today. How can we rapidly estimate where field missions should be deployed? How can we optimize the deployment of reconnaissance missions? How can we rapidly identify areas that are inaccessible? And how can we estimate in the first 24 hours the expected damage to trigger financial support? So based on those challenges, this work was led by JAM in collaboration with NASA, Jet Proportional Laboratory at Caltech, the World Bank, and the OpenStreetMap humanitarian team. It relied on earthquake observation-derived products that can indicate changes in the build environment with an incredible level of detail due to the relatively recent satellite constellation. It can detect not just changes in the environment due to factors such as landslide and liquefaction phenomena, but also uh, changes in the environment due to building damage and infrastructure damage. The structure of the framework starts with the definition of the pre-disaster exposure model, and for that, we explored the OpenStreetMap data for specific locations. In other words, and as my colleague Anirut will demonstrate, it is fundamental to understand what existed before. For example, the location of the buildings, the main material of construction, or the number of stories are fundamental to estimate damage and losses, even using remote sensing. Then for the affected areas, it is necessary to use the remote sensing datasets produced by the NASA JPL team. Uh, these data sets are raster files, which basically include uh, a set of pixels. Um, the value of the pixels vary between 0 and 1, 0 being uh, no change whatsoever, and 1 being um, a complete change in the built environment. Finally, we have calibrated some machine learning algorithms, in particular random forests, and they indicate uh, a damage state uh, for each building in the affected area. Um, the results from this framework, uh, this information can be used to identify the impacted areas where reconnaissance teams should be deployed, where additional damage information should be collected on the field, as well as um, uh, to estimate the expected damage and potentially assess risk indicators that can unlock financial support. Um, now, my colleague Anirudh will provide some additional information about this framework that was developed, as well as um, present some interesting examples for past events. On the 22nd of March last year, Zagreb was hit by the strongest earthquake since 1880, severely damaging public buildings and services in Zagreb and the surrounding areas. The earthquake resulted in one fatality, 26 injuries, and the displacement of hundreds of people. The earthquake took place in the context of the COVID-19 outbreak, while the country was still in a total lockdown because of the pandemic. And this made on-the-ground inspections by structural engineers much more difficult. The 3D model of the city of Zagreb integrates three-dimensional data onto an existing building footprints layer, bringing in data from the fields of urbanism, architecture, topography, statistics, and geology. 
This project is coordinated by the Office of Strategic Planning and Development of the City of Zagreb. Many of these layers are accessible publicly and this building inventory model serves as the exposure layer in the analysis that we will show in the, in the following slides. The building attributes that we've extracted include the primary occupancy class and the number of stories for each building. One day after the event, the Advanced Rapid Imaging and Analysis or ARIA team at NASA's Jet Propulsion Lab uh, located in Pasadena, California, created this Damage Proxy Map or DPM depicting areas that are likely damaged uh, due to the Zagreb earthquake. This map was derived from synthetic aperture radar and SAR images from the Copernicus Sentinel-1 satellites which are operated by the European Space Agency. The ARIA team compared the post-event SAR image acquired on the 23rd of March, which was one day after the event, with pre-event images taken uh, since January 2020. The DPM image covers an area of approximately 166 by 56 uh, kilometers, which is shown by the large red polygon. Each pixel in the inset measures about 30 meters across. And the color variation from yellow to red indicates increasingly more significant surface change. The damage proxy map is indicated as a product to be used as guidance to identify damaged areas and can be less reliable over visited areas. The map is more sensitive to building damage but small scale change or partial structural damage may not be de detected by this map. A shake map provides a spatial representation of the distribution and the intensity of the ground shaking field associated with the earthquake and it does so by employing a combination of recorded and estimated shaking values. This information is quite critical for quickly assessing the extent of the areas affected and determining which areas might be potentially hardest hit and this forms a valuable input in any framework for rapid estimation of damage and losses. The shake map intensity at the location of each building forms one of the input features for the machine learning models that we employed in this project. Two shake maps were available for this event, one from the USGS and one from the INGV in Italy where the USGS map also incorporates the potential amplification or deamplification of the shaking due to local side effects. The initial post earthquake damage and usability assessment survey uh, of the buildings was developed according to Italian experiences and adapted to local circumstances in Zagreb. All of the civil engineers who carried out the inspections underwent brief training and the levels of damage assigned by the field study experts were color coded as um, follows into green, yellow and red, where the green um, coded buildings would, were determined to be safe for use, um, but with suggested short term countermeasures such as the removal of collapsed chimneys, uh, moderate non-structural damage, and these, kind, these buildings also had slight structural damage in some cases. The yellow coated buildings um, were determined to be temporarily unusable with heavy non-structural damage or and moderate structural damage. And finally, the red um, coated buildings were determined to be unusable due to external risk or heavy structural and non-structural damage. Intersecting the shape map intensities from the USGS shape map and the damage proxy map from NASA's uh, DPN service for this event uh, for every building in the city uh, using the building inventory model from the city of Zagreb with the damage labels from this, the field survey that we showed on the previous slide uh, allows us to look for patterns or relationships between the input features and the expected output damage labels. We've built a machine learning framework and workflow for the use of the damage proxy maps and high resolution exposure along with shaking intensity data and any other data that might become available in, in the hours or days 
following an event. And we follow a three-step approach for building and evaluating the machine learning framework. The first step is to train the machine learning model based on a portion of the examples. The second step is to validate the machine learning model based on um, a second set of examples that were not used for the training uh, step. And the third step is to uh, test the machine learning model using previously completely unseen examples. For the event, we create an input feature vector comprising of the relevant building attributes, earthquake related attributes, and also remote sensing derived attributes for every building in the affected area. Similarly, for every building, we also track the damage grade label that was assi assigned by the inspection team. The input feature vector and the output damage labels form the key inputs into the machine learning models. The problem presented is one of multi-class classification and some of the widely used machine learning classification algorithms such as decision trees, random forests, naive bays, and support vector machines are trained with a subset of the available data. And then the best fit models are tested against a holdout subset of the data. For each building, the input feature vector for the classification algorithms comprises the ground shaking intensity as measured in MMI, the highest value of the DPM pixels that may fall within the building footprint, and any building attributes that may be available, such as the construction material, the number of stories, year of construction, slope of the terrain, and the location of the building, and so on. We evaluated several different classifier algorithms, eventually settling on random forest and neural net, which yielded the most favorable accuracy scores during training. Here we present some of the preliminary findings from the testing and evaluation of the damage classification algorithm for the Zagreb earthquake. In the image on the bottom right, we see the normalized accuracy scores for each of the four damage states that the algorithm attempts to classify the buildings into. The algorithm is able to correctly identify 81% of the undamaged buildings, uh, and this is for the previously unseen test uh, dataset and not the training dataset and it's also able to classify 37% of the completely damaged buildings. Across all damaged states, the preliminary results yield a balanced accuracy score of 0.4 for the Zagreb earthquake. We repeated the same exercise also for the 2020 January Puerto Rico earthquake and we obtained very similar results. If instead of attempting to classify damage into four different damaged states, if we switch from a multi-class multi classification to binary classification problem um, in that we try to, to assign buildings just into damaged or undamaged categories. The accuracy scores increase to 0.62 for the Zagreb earthquake and 0.72 for the Puerto Rico earthquake. The trade-off being the reduction in the gradation of damage levels that we can predict using the algorithm. Similar to the damage proxy map product described in the previous section, the ARIA team also generates flood proxy maps or FPMs for major flood events, also based on available SAR imagery, with a view to providing guidance on what areas that are likely to be flooded due to heavy rains or tropical storms. And this product is again termed as a proxy map because it is derived solely from Earth observation data and does not include validation based on ground truth. Although SAR imagery can identify the spatial extent of flooding, developing maps of flood depth often requires a post-processing phase where the flood foot footprint is intersected with topographic data in a digital terrain model. This adds additional uncertainty to the calculation of losses resulting from fronts, especially in regions where multiple sources of terrain data need to be used. An approach similar to, to the one described for the earthquake damage assessment is employed for the flood damage prediction. And the FPM pixel values and the elevation of the location of the building form the basic input features um, for flood damage assessment. And similar to the earthquake case, any available building attributes form supplementary input features. Damage grade labels for the training and testing uh, phase are once again preferably obtained from field survey maps and reports, as we show here in the image on the slide for the 2016 Louisiana floods in the United States. 
but in the absence of such detailed damage data sets, uh, aerial damage mapping products such as those that are often made available by the Copernicus emergency map mapping services and unit are, are used instead. We'd like to leave you with a few thoughts in summary of this work and some potential future deductions. SAR-derived damage proxy maps can form a valuable input for a rapid post-earthquake damage assessment framework. Curation of detailed building inventories, including building footprints and structural attributes is becoming more important as um, building level damage assessment becomes uh, more possible and more accurate. Harmonization of building damage datasets to use a common damage grading schema can unlock the potential for cross-regional training of machine learning models. With the next generation of half meter spatial resolution SAR data now becoming available, delineation of finer damage grades could become more accurate. Optical Earth observation imagery and SAR both have their relative advantages. So combining them in a single workflow could improve damage prediction accuracy. Application of this framework to flood damage is still at an early stage as damage caused by floods is not often visible from space. With that, we thank you for your kind attention and look forward to the discussions.